Good evening, everyone. I hope you guys were safe during the storm and um, that you weren't affected adversely. I'm happy that, or for me, my uh, electricity has been restored. We were without power for a while. And so um, I'm hoping that for those areas that are still in uh, so experiencing the aftermath of Lisa, that you will be able to experience some form of normalcy very soon. So um, we are resuming classes. We were out of school for quite a, a while. We missed a week. And we have some catching up to do. Tonight's session, we have a few objectives. We'll be going over the live session objectives as usual, discussing our new forum, test number two, uh, research and case presentations. Now, some of you have already attempted the forums and we're still gonna go through the instructions for those of you who haven't had an opportunity as yet. So these sessions are just to ensure that you don't fall behind, to ensure that you know what is due, when it's due, and how to receive all the points that you can get. It's to also ensure that your groups are functioning well. These are some important dates. So if you have a notebook, pencil, pen, these are some things you wanna write down or you could take a screenshot. The graded chapter assessments, these are forums, tests, quizzes, every assessment that you have is due by November 25th. Initially, your test two was due earlier in this month, but we've extended the date to the 25th due to the storm that we just had. Now, test number two is going to cover chapters four and five only, and we'll go into that in a little while. Forum number three is going to be due next week, Sunday. Practical project number five, the week after that. Research paper and the presentation recording is due on the 27th of November. You will submit a draft paper, however, by the 16th of November so that your peers can critique your articles and give you some feedback so you can make changes before your final submission. So once again, test two must be completed before November 25th. It only covers two chapters and this is the password. Please write the password down, but you should also be able to see it on Moodle. There are 30 true or false multiple choice questions and you'll have a duration of one hour and 15 minutes to complete that test. All right. So before I proceed, we're going to just take the attendance, see who is in class. Tyler? Melanie? Juan? Here, Mom. Santiago? Here, Mom. Kaylee? Leonce, Araceli, Alyssa, here, Kyler, yeah. Ronell, good night, Kyler, Ronell, here, Daniel. Ken Roy. Here, Miss. Fidel. Here, Miss. Ivani. Here. Dijon. Here, Miss. Miriam. Here. Kyra. Good night, here. Sophia. Cheyenne. Chelsea. Present. Jenny. Here, Miss. Kenya. Here, Miss. Xiomara. Present, Miss. Brandon. Present. Anthony. Here, Miss. Marta. Shamika. 
Present. Kerwin. Present, Ms. Sandra. Vashti. Kian. Here, Miss. Randine. Present, Miss. The persons I have marked absent are as follows Vashti, Sandra, Marta. Here, Miss. Marta is here. Thank you, Martha. Cheyenne, Sophia, Daniel, Araceli, Leonce, Kaylee, Melanie, and Tyler. Okay, so on Moodle, you'll be able to see your forum for chapter five, along with all the other resources. We have the chapter five presentation and outlined in the instructions are some slides that you can use to properly address forum number five. So I'm going to be asking Kerwin to read the instructions for us. And I must congratulate this commended class. Some of you started the forum already. So that's a very good job and on those who took the initiative to do that. All right, so Carwin, could you read the instructions for us, please? Yeah. We are now living in a new era of technology. Businesses have been declining due to their inability to adapt to this new technological era. Take a look around your community and share with us businesses that are currently using mobile computing. Be sure to properly describe the business and explain as clear as possible with example how, to part how that particular business is using mobile technology. In addition, select another business from within your community Describe the business and share how a mobile computing device could help the business improve operations or decision making. Thank you, Kerwin. All right, so you can take a screenshot of this as well. These are just the instructions and the, it can be a small business that utilize WhatsApp or even one that doesn't currently utilize WhatsApp. But the concepts that I'd like to see included, you'll find them in slides 7, 8, 19, 28, 31, and 32. So pay attention to the concepts that you see coming out there. And like I mentioned, the slides are already on Moodle. You can just go there and quickly download them um, and pay specific attention to those. I know as university students, you like to find the most um effective solution in terms of time saving. So chapter five presentation is here, and that's followed by the lecture that has been pre-recorded by Dr. Ryan. Following that, oh, let me just unhide this. We have um, the instructions for your peer review platform registration. So these instructions, I'd like you guys to, at the end of the class, go through them and ensure that you have signed up for the ojs.ub.edu.bz uh, platform. So there is where we find the academic journals for the university. All right, so right now you're just signing up. You're not uploading anything as yet. And we're looking for journal of MIS at UB. Most of the articles I've been telling you guys to look at or students work that has gone before you, you'll be able to find in this academic journal. This is a very good resource for you as you're writing your papers. You can come here and look at some of the work that other students have done just to give you an idea of what is expected. And perhaps some of them have even touched on the same topic you're looking at. So you'll be able to get some more reference and a benchmark, so to speak. All right, so when you go to that website, you would be able to follow the instructions. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it right now because we do have some case study presentations and I'd like us to get through those. But in addition to that, Dr. Ryan has recorded an instruction video showing you step-by-step. Step. If, if the uh, written instructions were not adequate, 
there is one here. All right, so I have to unhide these again. All right, and so this OJS platform registration, how to video recording walks you through step by step. Some persons need the visual and, you know, the pictures to show you what to do. In addition, there are three benchmark presentations here that you can also look at. These are the, the slides, not the document that you're, not the booklet that you're writing up, but the slideshow of them presenting what they've written in the document that you are currently working on. So these are three examples that your group can come and peruse just to get an idea of what you're working towards if you're still not quite clear. All right, so here's the screenshot. Um, please sign up for the OJS platform by September 9th. That's Wednesday of this week. And if you have any issues, we hope that we're able to address those early. Your research paper, um, when you're writing the research, use those past papers, like I mentioned, as a guide and ensure that you have your citations. Okay, so we're going to jump right into our case study presentations this evening. And let's see who our presenters are. Okay. So our first presenter is going to be Xiomara, followed by Brandon, then Anthony, and Martha. Each presenter has 15 minutes. All right, the floor is now yours. Good night, everyone. Um, I had actually planned to do this on Halloween, but anyways, happy Halloween, happy belated Halloween. Um, I will be presenting on, is BYOD good for business? Introduction, what is BYOD? It simply means to bring your own device. Devices can include, but are not limited to laptop, tablets, smartphones. Why is BYOD important? It can improve work life. Summary, this case study looks at whether a business should implement BYOD and how to implement it successfully. BYOD does cause problems which include managing mobile devices and protecting corporate data and networks. This case looks at more employees bringing their devices for work and how it becomes increasingly difficult to manage these devices. This is a risk because IT departments lose control over the hardware. IT won't be able to control what apps or programs are installed, what files have been downloaded, and security on the devices. This is a threat to the company information not being secured. To utilize BYOD securely, the firm needs a system that keeps track of the tools, location of the device, and knowledge of the software from employees' devices. Intel was a leader for BYOD due to the fact that they successfully implemented a policy that covers more than 30,000 employees' mobile devices. In anything, there are pros and cons, but cons can be minimalized if employees were taught how to utilize their devices for work. If firms use this to their advantage, it can create higher productivity and benefit the company massively. Question one. What are the disadvantages and advantages of allowing employees to use their personal mobile devices for work? Um, for the advantages, if employees are given the go ahead to bring their personal devices, the overall job satisfaction increases. Workers also become more productive as research from the case study actually shows that the average worker saves 81 minutes every week with the use of personal devices. If employees can use personal devices, this would allow the company to not only benefit from all of the same perks of a mobile workforce, but also the employee's devices would no longer be an expense. It can also become easier for the company to track each mobile device and apply software updates as employees will be using similar devices. So this would also ease stress from those who oversee technical support as all devices should function similarly. And finally, with the advances technology has to offer to businesses, various software products have emerged to help companies manage mobile devices differently and more efficiently. Similarly to SAP, 
Um, from the case study, the software, pro the products has the ability to remotely manage devices, manage the applications running on them and enforce various policies and also can help if any devices are stolen within minutes. They can track it down and they can protect what they need to. Some disadvantages, um, BYOD can negatively influence the workplace in many ways. One of the main concern being distractions. Businesses are worried that if they may become, if they allow their workers to bring in their own devices, they may become distracted by social media or other personal matters unrelated to the task at hand. Companies will need to ensure that this does not become an issue by enforcing laws in the workplace. One law that may be crucial is to have each employee own similar devices. If one group of employees has Apple and one group has Android software updates and technical support, um, you know, it will be, it'll take longer. Um, damaging the time savings that the device initially brings to the table. Arguably, the biggest Factor to the sorry the biggest factor to consider is the fact that employees must be trusted with data on their devices inside and outside the workplace. Because keeping in mind, if you're bringing your own device when you go home, you're not going to leave it there at work. You know you're going to be on your trip at home at a store or wherever because you have your device with you. Um, so keeping this in mind, we companies really want to trust their employees as information can be stolen and it definitely puts the company at a great risk. Question two, what management organization and technology factors should be addressed when deciding whether to allow employees to use their personal mobile devices for work? Um, for management, when it comes to management, the, you know, there are several factors that must be addressed for BYOD. I believe that this includes the fact that managers must ensure that the company has effective ways to keep track of all devices used in the workplace, as employees can bring in more than one device. Um, another factor to consider is that the company must ensure that employees stay focused on the job and do not get distracted by personal matters. If employees remain productive, this will be a good sign for the company as you know it will definitely be more efficient. A company must also ensure that their software development team ha has more than one professional way and the ability to make applications easy to access and navigate on these different mobile devices. The applications must also be connected firm to the IT network. And I also believe that their ERP system. So professionals in the software development category must find a way to make sure that the company's sensitive data is secure and wiped in a timely manner if stolen. Organization. When considering the organizational aspect, a company must utilize mobile devices in a manner that suits the corporate and IT strategy needed to determine if it is a good idea or if it's the best idea to bring in your BYOD and if it will be beneficial for the company. Creating an organized inventory system will also become a crucial determinant as it'll keep track of which devices are being used by who and for what purpose. It will also have features such as determining location, software, um, if the device is being used more, if there is more productivity within the organization. With an advanced knowledge on the device, the workplace companies can also you know, provide tech support for each employee. Technology. When considering technological factors, companies, um, they definitely try or would like to have BYOD to their advantage. Hypothetically, if there is a large variety of devices on operating system, Technical support representatives may find that their jobs are more difficult than necessary um, compared to if, you know, if all employees possess the same device. A firm may choose to hire one specialist for ensuring that new applications are easy to navigate through and are very useful on mobile devices. Firms must make use of a system that will keep their devices secure outside of the work. Again, also, as mentioned before, with a function to wipe data if necessary. 
three, evaluate how the companies described in this case dealt with the challenges of BYOD. Uh, companies in this study case dealt with challenges to me in a very professional manner. The companies would evaluate the potential problem and determine contingency plans for certain scenarios. Intel, in this case study, um, successfully implemented an enterprise-wide policy covering 30,000 employee devices. Their success comes from the clear-cut guidelines that they provided to their employees regarding information that they can and cannot be seen. They also allowed employees to select from many different levels of mobile accesses with increasing levels of security. SAP was also another example in this case study. It successfully implemented BYOD. The company developed a mobile platform made for work applications, allowing employees to work from anywhere. Blackstone, another example, made sure that only Apple specific products were allowed in the business because of their low maintenance procedures. Swiss RE, they made sure that their only enterprise mobility management can be supported through multiple systems. Benafi ensured that employees are 100% responsible for their devices they are given and maintenance is supported by the employees. Every company device must also be connected to the company network. Four, allowing employees to use their own smartphones for work will save the company money. Do you agree? Why or why not? Uh, in this present day where we have the option of BYOD, because it is still something new, and in my opinion, still being tested out by different companies, I would for now say no, it doesn't significantly save the company money. Um, there are no costs up front when employees bring their own devices, but there are many other complications. And over time, there could be costs that can become very expensive with BYOD in place. IT departments must put in additional work and effort at the office or at home. Many large companies must deal with different costs and responsibilities with the increasing costs. The use of personal devices from employees will make entry for viruses, breaching, and hacking much easier for companies um, to lose their data. This will happen if a company does not properly invest and fully investigate the cons of BYOD. But I do believe that down the road, this can be something very useful for companies. Um, and <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yes, I do believe that it can be very useful for them. Once they have done their, their tests and trials and each company can find or even develop a software that works for them, you know, we no longer need to sit behind a desk to get work done. And I do believe that each day we gradually are proving that, for example, in this class, we didn't have to physically go to school. You know, we could be at work. We could be at a coffee shop, you know, BYOD, bring your own device, hop into class and go from there. Would BYOD work in Belize? Uh, even though we are a small country, I do think it can work in Belize if businesses are willing to properly invest in the software for security. For example, where I work, we are allowed to bring our own device, but fortunately my company has definitely made it their business to invest in different securities. For example, working from home, uh, we'd have to connect to the Barracuda VPN network. I know that is a very safe and secure network, and of course, IT has to set that up for us. At work, we use SAP. You know, SAP, um, you can be used on your, besides your laptop, on your phone, you know. It's no longer where we are limited to only working from the office. You know, these things make our jobs easier. Uh, we don't have to wait anymore to get something done. We are now answering emails off our phone, tablets, approving purchase orders in SAP, you know, all while still being mobile. Um, also, our my work set up a, the authenticator app on everybody's phone for you know teams for emails, anything related to the company. You will have to go through the authenticator app first, and then get your code and proceed from there. You know these are the the small, probably costly steps that the company took, but you know it benefited us all that we were able to work from anywhere and everywhere. Even after this unfortunate hurricane, you know, from the weekend when we started getting back electricity and such, we could have started catching up with work. We didn't have to wait until Monday to come in. 
And, you know, even Monday when we came in, it's not if IT is working on something, we didn't have to sit put at our desk, we could walk around with our tablet with our phones and we're still able to get things done. And that is my presentation. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Siamara. Our next presenter can go ahead. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Can I get confirmation from someone that they are able to see my screen? Yeah, we could see it. Thank you. So first it was floppy disk, then CD-ROM and USB flash drives. Now file sharing and saving can be done without a physical storage unit, um, simply by using the cloud. Once uploaded to the cloud, you can access and work on your files from anywhere at any time. So what exactly is the cloud and how does it work? This is what exactly um, what we will find out in this presentation. And the presenter is no other than your truly Brandon Kintaris. The main objective for this presentation is for you all to grasp an understanding of what is cloud computing. Without further ado, we proceed on to the introduction where I am gonna discuss four must know facts about cloud computing. But before I do so, allow me to allude that cloud computing or the cloud is, is essentially the internet. Like the internet information in the cloud is held on physical servers that are maintained by providers like Apple, Amazon, or Google. And when you save something to the cloud, you are really saving it to a server located on a massive server farm run by the service provider. And in, in this um, presentation, we'll learn the biggest um, service provider in the world. Um, because the information is not located on any single hard drive, it can be accessed from any device and downloaded onto almost any device with cloud computing. And under the first most known fact about cloud computing is that the cloud is not new. Using an internet-based service to stream, edit, and send messages is also considered cloud computing. So if you are streaming movies, you are already using the cloud. The technology behind the cloud has existed since the end of the 60s, but we are just seeing all of the great potentials that this technology can offer business. The second point is that you can access the cloud from anywhere. Okay, so probably not in the middle of the jungle, but if you can connect to the internet, then you can access um, anything you have stored on the cloud now, and this gives you the ability to work outside of the office or while traveling. You have like all of the data of the office right on your computer or your mobile device. Cloud services gives you a safe place to share files and grant access to more users. And you can organize your files uh, into categories and organize who has access to them as well. Thirdly, uh, most businesses use the cloud forage and backup. There are a lot of things that you can do with cloud-based applications. But most companies are using the cloud to store their piles of data. These cloud solutions are a type of uh, insurance policy. If anything happens to their computer hardware, they have like all of their data available on the cloud and the backup and recovery benefits of the cloud are huge for the company. Importantly, cloud computing accommodates growing businesses. Why is this? Is because the, the cloud does not have like any limits that are hard to change. Uh, the cloud space can be of any size that your company needs. As your company grows, a cloud-based infrastructure will be able to handle all the growth without the commotion you get from old school servers and computers. The cloud is very customizable for any organization. Moving forward to the summary of the case study that was assigned to me, uh, it reads as follows. Cloud computing has become an affordable and sensible option for companies of all sizes, ranging from tiny internet startups to established companies like Netflix and FedEx. According to Cisco Systems, 94% of all computing workloads will run in some form of cloud environment by 2021. 
Amazon Web Services, abbreviated as AWS, provides subscribing companies with flexible computing power and data storage. Remember that I said that we're going to learn who is the um, world's uh, greatest cloud service provider. Um, that is Amazon Web Service. First question that is under my case study is what business benefits do cloud computing services provide? So cloud computing has become an affordable option for business of all sizes. From small internet startups to large operations such as Netflix and FedEx. Amazon services, uh, for example, offer subscribing businesses flexible computing power and data storage, as well as data manage management, um, messaging, uh, payment, and other services that can be used together or individually depending on the needs of the business. Anyone with an internet connection and a few dollars can use the same computing system that Amazon use, uses to run its retail business. Amazon Web Services can automatically allocate resources if customers provide specifications for the amount of server space, bandwidth, storage, and other services they require. You do not have to pay a monthly or annual fee to use Amazon Computing Services. Instead, you pay for exactly what you use. Second question would be, what problems do cloud computing services solve? Cloud computing also appeals to many businesses because the cloud services provider will handle all of their IT infrastructure maintenance and upkeep, allowing their businesses to focus on higher value work. And these um, startups and smaller businesses are discovering that they no longer need to build their own data center. They now have access to technical capability that was previously only available to much larger businesses thanks to the cloud infrastructure such as Amazon's. Um, the second one would be flexibility in operations. When, when we say flexibility in operations, to save costs, many small and medium-sized businesses usually function with fluctuating bandwidths, and this can be difficult to manage as wavering ramp-ups and scale-downs could deter performance and productivity. By embracing cloud computing, businesses can now acquire maximum operational flexibility, which not just saves costs, but also maximizes productivity and performance. There's also reduction in costs. Cloud-based services are available on subscription basis, which is ideal for businesses who have limited capital to spend upfront. The seamless setup and management capabilities of the vendors can help the small and medium-sized businesses to save heavily on hardware infrastructure and let the cash flow be used on core business. Um, I would, yeah, business processes. What are the key disadvantages of cloud computing? The key disadvantage would be cloud reliability. Again, the cloud, like any other IT setup, can experience technical problems such as reboots, network outages, and downtime. And these events can incapacitate business operations and processes and can be damaging to the business. Um, there's another issue when it comes to cloud security and data. Most cloud service providers implement relevant security startups and industry certifications to ensure that their cloud environment remains safe. However, a cloud computing service is a third party and one which is being accessed, accessed sorry, by users from all over the world. Uh, this may increase the chance to, um, that unauthorized users can gain access to users' data. However, cloud providers offer password protection and use sophisticated data encryption technology. What kinds of businesses um, are most likely to benefit from using cloud computing and why? Video streaming businesses like Netflix would greatly benefit. And in February 2016, Netflix completed a decade-long project to shut down its own data centers and use Amazon's cloud exclusively to run its business management, um, like not having to its business processes because, because management like not having to guess months beforehand what firms, hardware, storage, and network needs would be. 
and Amazon Web Services would provide whatever Netflix needed at the amount that it may need. Netflix also maintains a content delivery network to internet service providers and other third parties to speed up the delivery of movies and web traffic between Netflix and its customers. Global corporations can also greatly benefit with cloud computing as many company um, or any company that has franchise or offices all over the world can benefit from cloud computing. Like each office can communicate with others and share information as needed. And working in the cloud can actually save global enterprises money because it eliminates the need for many physical locations. Workers can access data via mobile devices. Um, there's, it also eliminates the need for a brand or office entirely. And when it comes to the clear, when it comes clear to them that a physical location is no longer required, it is then that the cloud becomes the hub of all of its business activity. Accounting firms, researchers, accounting firms has also um, great potential benefit, benefiting for cloud computing. Accountants are among like the top firms that require the cloud computing um, as they are able to upload relevant financial information here where an accountant can access it whenever needed. And then tax returns, digital ledgers, and other types of data can also be stored in the cloud, allowing clients to download copies of these documents as needed, as well as they're able to upload any document that the accountant may need to the cloud, and then the, the, the um, accountant just access it via that mean. No? Relating cloud computing in Belize. So on a daily basis, we, we all use our phones to connect to the cloud and store data. So we're all using cloud computing in Belize. Businesses throughout Belize use the cloud to store business data. Businesses such as Fultec Systems and Angelo Express, as well as larger corporations such as Belize Bank, Atlantic Bank, Heritage Bank, all of which have branches throughout Belize, use it to stay connected and access files. Businesses can reach their customers 24 seven anywhere, thanks for the computing environments, portability and flexibility. Even the universities, uh, UB use, use um, the cloud. If I'm not mistaken, it uses to store Moodle data and other kind of information. Miss, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there's also independent junior college that use the cloud and these students can attend class and access files from any location because we are, we are using the cloud. As a concluding activity, I have a four pick one word where we just try to guess um, which word is being portrayed with, within the four images. Um, just give you all a, a minute for you all to guess and see who get it right. Bookmark. That's right. Thank you so much for your participation. Um, we have reached the end of my presentation. Thank you all for your attentiveness and we're heading over. Very good job, Brandon. Thank you for your presentation. And we're going to move on to presenter number three. All right, good night, everyone. So kindly let me know if you guys can see my screen and if you, if you guys can hear me too. Yes, we can. All right, thank you. All 
<laughs> All right, so um, my case study is about uh, wearable computers, right? So, so um, moving on to the objective here is to determine if, um, well, this is the question that um, the case study is asking. Um, is business ready for wearable computers? So what are the wearable computers? So just a, just a brief um, introduction here, right? So, uh, wearable computers is starting to take off. So smart watches, smart glasses, smart ID badges, and activity trackers promise to change how we go about each day and the way we do our jobs. So the case is just um, focusing more on the business um, perspective, not really on the consumer perspective, right? But there are times that it's really hard to, you know, detach the consumer um, or the user perspective when it comes. But this specific case study is relating it more to the business, okay? So this is picture, this picture just to show you uh, the wearable computers, where are, um, where in the body we come, you will commonly see or find wearable computers, right? So of course, but um, the key word here is sophistication, right? When it comes to wearable computers, high-end technology, um, this is um, used by high-end um, firms. So we have the head, the helmet. So that's where we uh, see this type of technology. Um, we have the glasses. We also have that will um, be on your eyes. We have um, watch bands that will be on the wrist. We have um, also rings on our fingers. We have gloves on our hands. We have a um, band on our chest. We have arms on the waist. We have um, clothes on our body. We have shoes, socks with legs. And we also have um, well, that's pretty much it, right? So these are just basically areas that we able to see those, right? So um, the first question here is um, asking, wearables have the potential to change the way organizations and workers conduct business? Discuss, discuss the implications of this statement. So the first point here, um, Wearable devices allow workers to continue to work on their given assignments while they receive visual and aural signals. So it contains multiple sensors that track various types of data while it tries to improve the workplace environment. Of course, this has to do with productivity and you know, and even customer service at the same time, you know. So it does by does this by increasing corporate costs. They take the feedback by get from their devices in order to promote productive collaboration, as mentioned earlier. Some workers use their smartphone, smartphones in order to display their data from the wearable device. They also use voice commands in order to accomplish tasks. And the second pointer here, um, the companies are now entering the wearable revolution, which they are owing the business with the wearable technologies. So uh, in other words, they are making everything more portable. Now, we, like as um, many years ago, we had desktops, now we have laptops and everything is better, getting um, more compact and even smaller. So we have it, um, we can use it in our business um, and, and free, right? On the last pointer, this is the types of changes that are occurring in the business models around the globe, which is only possible with the enlightenment of the wearables in the industry. So as the picture here shows, there are tech the technology is just basically dominating the world. So and we have here the most valuable brands, so as Amazon, Apple, uh, Microsoft, Google, and you know, we also have payment information and pay, um, at Visa, all right? So moving on to the other questions. What management organization and technology issues will have to be addressed if a company was thinking of equipping its workers with a wearable computer device? Even though it's sophisticated and it brings um, all type of, um, of benefits to the business, um, the first pointer here reads that technology sophistication firms 
will understand things they never could before workers and customers, what they do every day, how healthy they are, where they go, and even how they feel. So this obviously has implications for protecting individual privacy. Like, you know, the, uh, the, the employer will be able to share to see what the employee is doing, right? And of course, I know the reason potential employee and customer fears that businesses are collecting sensitive data about them. So businesses will need to act very carefully, you know, protecting the employee um, privacy. So the second point is says that the security issues in the applications and softwares used by the wearables can also be of great work because nowadays security is the most important aspect whenever it comes to it comes down to technology, you know, like um, cyber, cyber attacks, viruses, and etc. Because all the important data of the organization is, is at stake if security of the wearable is not up to date. So it's making sure that they are using up to date information and the right software to run um, to run the device itself. So today's smart watches, glasses um, haven't been designed with security in mind, you know. So if you're using, for example, uh, um, a smart glass, glasses, sorry, um, sometimes they, they, when they, whenever they design it, they are not thinking that um, if that glass is also going to protect the employee, for uh, depending on the type of job that they're doing. For example, BSI, which is um, to our industry, like there are certain areas that specifically in shocks, um, the staff there that need to they need to wear, wear you know, um, um, what's the word again? Um, protective glasses, protect um, and, and the proper equipment, right? But if you are using a smart glass, it will be kind of hard. That apart from using the smart glass, it will be you know wearing something else uh, like a protective. I wear, okay? So the sensors in the smart glasses are also not as accurate as other products, right? So that's another issue that they have when it comes to the smart glasses because that's what the um, case study also looks at when it comes to the smart glasses. So that's another disadvantage there. Um, so uh, the last point here looks at um, the success, successful adoption of wearable computer depends not only on, on cost effectiveness, but on the development of new and better apps and integration with existing IT infrastructure and the organization's tools for managing and securing mobile devices. So this is just basically similar to what I just mentioned before, make sure that um, they are investing um, not on any type of um, software, but on the best software, depending on where the employee is working and how um, every, the business will be conducting um, such um, um, transaction, for example. All right, so moving on to the third question. Uh, what kind of businesses are most likely to benefit from wearable computers? Select a business and describe how a wearable computing device will help that business improve operations or decision making. All right, so looking like at, at an international business, for example, we have, um, I chose Walmart. So because it's very remarkable when it comes to marketing, everybody knows who, what's, um, what, what, is, what it is about when it comes to Walmart. Strategies and etc. So the first one says that sales managers can receive a discount approval request and take action right from the watch. So if they use a smart watch, they can have access to all of this as long as um, all the proper applications is um, is, is is the appropriate one and is is of course is um, updated. Okay, and of course second consideration the security itself. Um, no, the second pointer here, customer service managers can receive alert, alerts if a critical case requires immediate attention or call with time are about to exceed threshold. So you're just looking at more of uh, customer service, but you know, employees, they are being responsive, not um, letting the customer there, you know, to, to not um, be on um, contact resolution, first contact resolution there. Also, uh, digital marketers can also be alerted when a marketing campaign surpasses a goal. So uh, they, will, they will also handle updated information. 
on analytics for watch enables them to use analytics data delivered to, the, to their smartwatches to view performance metrics, uncover new insights and take action with dashboards. So whenever there's a new insight, of course the analytics um, department or team will be able to you know, provide insights immediately and to review them if they are accurate and et cetera. Um, users will also be able to query via voice search to access a report via dashboard or find other information. So the point here is that information will be um, very fast and easily transmitted, you know, and um, the access of, to, it, to that information will be very, um, very, very beneficial as long as, as you are um, an authorized user to be an employee or employer. All right, so, So oh, I'm relating this uh, this here to Belize. Well, of course, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of this um, presentation, the word was sophistication. Um, we will mostly see this um, like in um, developed countries, not here in Belize. Yes, of course, we do have um, some type of technology, but not uh, so the one that um, this case study is referring to, you know, like, um, usage of um, smart glasses. Yes, but I see we do have um, over cons um, many consumers here of, um, you know, the Apple Watch and other smart watches. But when it comes to businesses, um, it's kind of really hard to relate that here in Belize. But again, it's sophistication. It's not just using any type of, sort of smart um, wearable um, device. It's also using the right um, device here, but of course, giving some suggestion here, where in Belize would be like beneficial to implement this type of, um, of wearable computers. And the first one here would be like where, warehouses, the second hospitals, and the third services or delivery. So let me just give here um, uh, explanation to this. So the first one, just basically um, saying that warehouse managers are able to capture real-time performance data using a smartwatch to better manage distribution and fulfillment operations. So this will apply for just, for just an example, like Venice, for example, like, you know, the manager needs to um, look at all of these trends, these reports, real-time, make sure everything is real-time. And for that, they need the proper software to be installed on the smartwatch, right? Just to avoid delays and you know customer satisfaction of course and then the second the hospitals you know um we are not um when it comes to hospitals we are not um, customers we are patients so doctors can track or maintain a link with patients doctors and nurses can use smart eyewear for hands-free access to patients medical records all right of course you know um it depends on the type of job that employees are doing in the you will bet you know that you will choose um, as an employer you will choose the best um um and uh wearable device or computer there and the, the third and the last one services and delivery so this is um a very common one that can be implemented um persons using wearable devices to deliver products so this can also be a product can also be like you know anything it can be food um, any homemade products. So, so if you are an employer and then you are hiring employees like the delivery, uh, delivery person to do these deliveries, of course you can use a smartwatch, a smartwatch, you know, to track um, all the, your calls, your uh, potential customers, and it will this will also help your delivery person to know where exactly um, the product needs to be delivered, you know, on a on a real time and etc. So I'm um, moving on to the last um, points here that, that I have. So conclusion I'm going to remember from, from this. So if a company was looking to equip their employees with wearable computer computing devices, the main thing that they should focus, focus on is how their employees react to them. That's very important. And Adding to that, the management aspect of the issue and will be deciding what kind of devices each position in the business will wear. Again, it depends if you're marketing, if you are doing sales, if you're doing um, we are anything when it comes to warehouse. Um, it depends for the best, the most suitable um, wearable device will be 
you know, implement it, right? So different devices there. So and the second point to remember the security CFP measures needed to implement the wearable devices, you know. So if you are wearing, um, maybe if you are working at um, the area where you are required to wear a helmet uh, or any other safety gear, so let's make sure that all of this is implemented. And uh, looking at the other side, um, when it comes to security, cyber attacks, viruses, um, when it comes to those type, um, that's also covered here on the security or CFP video. And the last one, wearable computers are not just the consumer benefit, but it's of, of course, it's equally important for conducting businesses and dealing with the technologies, innovation and productivity. So everything has to do with employers and being responsible as, as to how they're um, handling and how they're implementing these wearable technologies, you know. So that is, that's one of the most important points here. Um, well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if you guys have any questions, any clarifications, if you want to add anything, kindly let me know. And that's the end of our presentation. Thanks again. Thank you, Anthony. We're going to move on to our final presenter for this evening. Good night, everyone. Today I will be presenting on IT infrastructure and emerging technologies, and my case study is Rockwell Automation Fuels the Oil and Gas Industry with IoT. So Rockwell Automation Incorporation is the world's largest provider of industrial automation and information solution headquartered in Millburg, Wisconsin. Rockwell em employs over 22,500 people and serve customers in more than 80 countries. Rockwell is part of the Fortune 500 and reported 6.6 .6 billion in revenues in 2018. The company is organized into two major business segments, which is architecture and software and control products and solution. Rockwell offers a diverse array of products, including information software for for manufacturing intelligence, control system for process automation, safety technology, sensors and switches, and net network technology. The company also offer, offers services associated with these automation products, including repair, asset management, and remote support. So a summary to this case study is an industrial manufacturer, Microsoft and the Internet of Things combined, combined to provide innovative improvement to the worldwide oil and gas supply chain. So my first question asks, what is Rockwell Automation relationship with the oil and gas industry? industry. Rockwell Automation Incorporation is the, large, is the world's largest provider of the industrial automation and information solution headquarters in Mill Road, Wisconsin. Rockwell products are essential to many areas of the global oil and gas supply chain. So companies involved in the mining, moving, refining, and selling of oil and gas depend on Rockwell product and services to keep their equipment running smoothly and with a minimum of maintenance. My second question is, how has the Internet of Things changed the oil and gas industry? So for Rockwell, the Internet of Things represents a way to provide unprecedented service for the automation product. The most important services Rockwell offers customers who buy is automation products, Products are repair, repair, asset management, and remote support. Using the Internet of Things, the company is able to provide the services more efficiently and successfully than ever before. My third question is, why was Microsoft Azure a good, good choice for Rockwell? 
So today Rockwell uses Microsoft Azure to dramatically improve their efficiency and to re revolutionize the petroleum supply chain. Microsoft Azure is a cloud computing platform and infrastructure created for building, deploying, and management, managing applications and services through a global network of Microsoft data centers. My fourth question asks, what business problems did Rockwell partnership with Microsoft and implement, implementation of IoT technology solve or alleviate? So Rockwell IoT services has strengthened the company competitive advantage in, this, in the oil and gas industry and has reduced downtime and maintenance for its product via predictive anal analytics and preventive maintenance. So when individuals form fillers can lead to losses of hundreds of thousands of dollars per day at a typical oil drilling platform. Any advantages in maintenance be up very quickly. And when those savings are passed on to individuals at the gas pump, everyone wins. On the other hand, using the Microsoft Azure as its data warehouse, Rockwell products now generate data in real time via sensors that allow the company to predict and even prevent problems before they happen. For example, Rockwell Electrical Pump's oil transport plat platform known, known as kits and fueling station appliances all send data to the cloud. We at Rockwell can analyze and act on the data using the Azure IoT services. Rockwell can monitor the performance and inventory of this system, remotely improving operational performance for its customer. So my last question was, what are some other common application for the Internet of Things? And when answering this question, I can say that this question also answers how it relates to Belize. So the first one is the smartphones, smart home, sorry. One of the best and the most practical ap application of the IoT smartphones really take both convenience and home security to the next level. So there are, there are different, the, there are different levels of which the IoT is applied for smart homes. The best is the one that blends intelligent utility system and entertainment together. For instance, your electricity meter with an IoT device giving you insight into your, into your everyday water usage. Your set-top box that allow you to record, to record shows from remote automatic il illumination system, advanced locking system, and connected surveillance systems all fit into this concept of smart homes. The next one is smart city. Not just internet access to people in a city, but to the devices in, in it as well. That's what smart cities are supposed to be made of. And when we can, and we can probably say that we are going towards realizing this dream. Efforts are being made to incorporate connected technolo technology into infra infrastructural requirements and some vital concerns like traffic management, waste management, water distribution, electricity management, and more. All this work, all this work towards eliminating some day-to-day -day challenges faced by people and bringing added convenience. Then we have farming. Farming is one sector that will benefit the most from the internet of things. With so many development happening on tools farmers use for agriculture, the future is, is your promise. Tools are being developed for, for drip irrigation, understanding crop patterns, water distribution, drones from farm surveillance and more. This will allow farmers to come up with a more productive yield and take care of the con concerns better. So my key takeaway for this case study was, was that the internet of things is a crucial system that can be implemented in Belize. To support this LOT um, can help in city planning and management. It can also simplify various factors such as population growth, zoning, mapping, water supply, transportation patterns, food supply, social services, and land use. Last but not least, I gather my information from one short video provided in my case and Chrome. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. 
So we've had our presenters for this evening. Uh, is there anybody who came in after I call the attendance? Yes, I came in late. Okay. <laughs> All right, so apart from Melanie, nobody else came in after I called. Um, I think you called my name when um, I wasn't here. Sandra? Sandra, okay. All right. Okay, so um, I just want to fill in Sandra and Melanie. So we have a few updates on Moodle. You can go ahead and look at those. There's a test there. Um, you have your forum number five, and of course the material pertinent to your chapter and your practical projects are there. In our next session, we'll be looking at your practical project assignment, which is practical project number five. And we'll be hearing from a few more presenters. I'll also be giving you some feedback on some of your research projects that I've seen so far. Now, a few groups have shared with me, and I just want to say this before we end tonight. In your literature review, please remember to share what um, researchers have found out and what studies they've used to come up with those conclusions. All right. So I want to see some of that coming out if you haven't included that in your literature reviews. Um, and as we continue to work, please be reminded that your groups will be expected to submit a draft of your document by the 16th on OJS. Each of you should create an account there and the instructions are on Moodle. When you submit that draft, it's the responsibility of your peers now to just go through, read your document and give you constructive criticism. Don't just say the document is okay. You are helping your peers to get a better grade. If you see grammatical errors, point it out. If you see things that could have been stated better, point it out. So grade that person as if it were your own project. Give them the critique so that they can get a better grade than they would have without your feedback. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your evenings. Please stay safe and I will see you on Wednesday. Yes, my name is, um, can I please share again that screen um, with all the due dates and assignments? Sure. Okay, so I also have it on Moodle. Oh, just a minute. I think I missed. Could... Wouldn't yeah? I, in regards to the test, you said that we can take it between now and the 25th or we have to wait till 25th? No, no, it's already open. So the reason why it's up to the 25th is so that you have enough time to get it done. Some people were affected by the storm, so they would have lost power and, you know, people are trying to get their lives back together. So you have between now and the 25th of this month to get it in. Any outstanding assignments for Chapter 5 will be due by then. The only assignment that I expect after the 25th um, is the research paper. That's your paper, recording, and the presentation slides. Okay? Thank you. Sure. All right. Thank you, miss. All righty.